All right, so before you say anything like, oh, are you in your garage? Oh my God, what a mess behind you. Yes, I am in my garage. My house is a bit noisy right now. I have landscapers currently circling my house. And <laughs> my desk is right by my window, so it would, just would have been a mess. I decided to switch up my background, see if I like it, and we'll go from there. So I don't know if you guys heard about this yet, but earlier this week, Apple announced Final Cut Pro for the iPad, and it has literally everyone freaking out. Yes, you heard that right, so let's jump in and talk about it. Okay, so for those of you who are not familiar with Final Cut Pro, it's a professional video editing software that has been exclusive to Macs for years, maybe even decades at this point. I don't even know, as long as I've been using Macs, let's put it that way. However, with the release of Final Cut Pro for iPads, Apple has made video editing more accessible and convenient for everyone. It will be available on May 23rd, so you know you still have a couple weeks, so don't go run to the App Store looking for it just yet because you probably won't find it. So the first thing you'll notice is the interface of this thing. It's been designed specifically for touchscreen devices, making it easy and intuitive to use, and generally just looks like it feels like you would expect an editing app to work on an iPad. You can swipe, tap, pinch your way through the editing process. Anything you can do with your hands, you can do on the iPad. And the most standout feature to me is what is making me really excited to give this thing a shot, is the Apple Pencil integration. You currently can't find any other MLE, not DaVinci Resolve. You're definitely not gonna find this on LumaFusion or iMovie. But it looks like it's gonna be next level for motion graphics because not only can you draw with your own normal pen tools, but then it showed you know, how you can do even basic animations towards the end. It looks like they were even keying it with different layers to have subjects going between letters. I don't know, some crazy motion graphics stuff going on there. It looks absolutely incredible, and I can't wait to see more on that. All right, so moving on. It has this very interesting tool. Uh, you know, at like the bottom right, it's kind of on the right-hand side of the screen. Almost looks like a wheel of some sort. They definitely have optimized the UI for iPad, and more specifically for touch. A lot of these demos, they're not even using a keyboard, which is really cool because for DaVinci Resolve, while it is optimized for the iPad and it is for touch, it's still very useful to have a keyboard to run the majority of the task. So it also has support for multicam editing, which means you can edit footage from multiple cameras simultaneously, which I absolutely love, and I've recently started experimenting with different camera angles myself, so I'm glad to see this in here. This feature is particularly useful for those who shoot with multiple cameras or like to capture different angles while filming. I gotta say, they really did a good job at bringing over the simplicity that Final Cut is known for. As you can see, there's not much going on in this user interface on the screen. I think that's nice, especially on the iPad, so, you know, it can get really crammed in that small space. So here's the Fast Cut feature with machine learning. You've got removal mass, auto crop, voice isolation. That actually, I'm, I'm interested to compare that with DaVinci Resolve's uh, voice isolation. There will also be some good graphic packs in there, as well as support for motion VFX, which is a nice feature I know a lot of people use. It can handle 4K HDR footage, you can import, edit, and export high quality videos without any lag or performance issues, and it will be compatible with Final Cut Pro for the desktop, which is great and honestly a must at this point, so you can work between platforms. You can essentially start and edit on your Mac and pick up on the iPad later on if you want. In addition, it has all the features you'd expect from a professional video editing software, such as color grading, audio mixing, and special effects baked in. So this will be on the App Store for five bucks a month or $50 per year with a one month free trial, which is interesting. Final Cut has always been in the same boat as Resolve where it's been, you know, a one-time payment and then you own it for life. Resolve for the iPad follows the pay for it once and own it for life model too. I think it's 99 bucks or 90 bucks, somewhere around there for the studio version. And then you just own it outright, forever. Or you could just stick with the free version, which covers 99% of what most people are editing anyway. While it definitely is not a bad price, especially for what you get, I mean, I think creators or Final Cut lovers in general will, will pay for it in a heartbeat. I just find it interesting that they've, you know, decided to go with the subscription model. And we'll see where it goes. So if you're a content creator who's always on the go, Final Cut Pro for iPads is the perfect solution for you. You can edit your video anytime, anywhere, without the need for powerful computers or expensive software. Overall, I think it's a great move in the right direction to see Final Cut Pro making its way to the iPads, where the promise you know, from Apple for the iPads was it's your all-in-one computer for a while now. Yeah, I think it's a game changer for video editing on the go, and I can't wait to see what content creators will come up with using the software. 
So that's it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think about this announcement in the comments below. If you found this information helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more tech news and tutorials. Thanks for watching.